One more easy option that is now starting to take advantage of modern technology is 3D printing. 3D printing is basically like any other kind of printing, except that instead of printing onto paper, you're now printing actual 3D objects. These objects can be made from plastic, metal, wood, china and more. All you need is the raw material, which will often come in the shape of a thin tube, and a 3D file called a CAD file, which stands for Computer Aided Design. The file provides the 3D printer with the detailed instructions for how to produce the item, and the printer then goes about melting the material and drawing it one layer at a time. As it does this, it slowly builds the solid object up from the ground. What this means is that as long as your product is relatively simple, you can print it from nothing with no need for any complex manufacturing or assembly. There are websites you can do this from, such as Shapeways, which you'll find here at shapeways.com. To use Shapeways, you simply need to send your CAD file away and then choose your material. This way, you can make literally anything you can think of. And of course, if your product has more than one part, or if it uses more than one material, then you can just attach those two materials or two colours yourself by hand as the last stage of production. Shapeways in particular has come on a long way. Today it has more options such as drone parts and even allows you to open your own store right there on the site and begin selling. You can also browse what other people have made. The other good news? It's actually possible to buy 3D printers for your own home. These aren't particularly cheap and the amount you'll spend really depends on what it is that you want. The products range from things like the Formlabs Form 2 for several thousand dollars to the China A8 for between one and two hundred dollars. If you're going to be making tiny plastic toys then even these cheap desktop 3D printers are probably enough. If you want to run a full business then investing in a larger printer becomes necessary. If you're looking for a selection of 3D printers, then perhaps the best place to start is with MakerBot. And this is a brand that makes a wide range of printers, all of which get great reviews and should be more than up to whatever challenges you throw at them. And you can find out more here at MakerBot.com. Once again, with a simple tool like this and perhaps an e-commerce store on your website, you can then start selling simple 3D products from your site. This might mean things like phone cases, tablet stands, key rings, toys or figurines, desk caddies and more. You can then simply print out each order as it comes in and send it off for a considerable profit. The phone case business model in fact is a very popular one and one that lots of people make a lot of money from. Before this can be a viable business model for you though, you're first going to need to learn how to create those 3D CAD files. This basically just means using a piece of software, just as you would use Photoshop to create a professional image. The good news? There's plenty of free software out there and there's lots of cheap software as well. One great option is Rhinoceros or Rhino3D, which you can find out more about here at rhino3d.com. And another is Blender, which you can read about here at blender.org. Now let's take a look at how you would get started with Rhino3D. And what you learn here should be relatively easy to apply to your CAD software of choice. What you're left with will be a file that you can either send to Shapeways for printing or print out on a 3D printer at home. You're going to need these skills later on too when it comes to prototyping and even manufacturing. So even if your business model isn't going to be selling 3D printed products, I highly recommend that you give this a go. And there's a real thrill that comes from creating a model and then receiving the finished article in the post. Now when you load up Rhinoceros 3D, you'll be greeted first by the option to select a template which will allow you to pick the rough scale you want to work with. Decide on whether the item you're going to be designing will be served better by being measured in centimetres or millimetres and then choose appropriately. 
Note, however, that once you begin, you can go to View Grid Options to change this specifically and to set the distance between the squares on your grid. This is very useful if you're prototyping because it lets you create images of a specific size accurately and conveniently. Now you'll be greeted by four panels which give you your top view, front view, right view and perspective view. The first three are schematic views allowing you to precisely measure the shape of images while the top right one allows you to rotate your image around in 3D. If you want to see what it would look like as a solid object then select this view and then click render or shade for a preview of what it would look like. By clicking on layer you can edit the materials and the colors that your object will use and even set textures in order to make your item look like a real 3D object rather than a block of dough. Now to get started you will probably want to select one view to work in. You can double click the title of any view to expand it to fill the whole screen and click again to switch to the four plane view. Now you will begin to draw into the grid and you can do this by drawing individual lines, shapes or 3D objects by selecting the tool from the left toolbars or from along the top. Drawing individual lines gives you the most control and to use this you should select near, a checkbox down the bottom of the screen, so that the lines start and finish in the same place when you want them to. Otherwise you can have minute gaps between lines which is very frustrating when you try to join them and hold shift while dragging if you want your line to be completely straight. Now it's time to go 3D. Draw yourself a box or a triangle or whatever to start with and now you will want to make that a three-dimensional object. To do this you have several objects. First select all the lines and click combine down the left, it looks like a jigsaw puzzle, and that will become a flat outline. Now to pull that outline upwards to create a box or sheath, click Extrude Planar Surface and then click on your new shape and drag it up or down the Y axis. This object will be hollow so to close it click Cap Planar Holes to turn it into a box or a pyramid. Another option is to simply change views and to draw the other sides going up and along the top manually. As long as you connect them all, you can choose to combine again and then surface, curve, network in order to turn those lines into another box or pyramid. But remember to use cap again as well. Finally, if you want to use one of Rhino's fancier abilities, try selecting your shape and then typing revolve into the command box. And you can learn a lot of functions by playing around in here. Now draw the line along which you want to revolve your object and then choose the degrees. Type 360 degrees and you'll make a tube out of your shape, which is how you make things like vases, cups and cylinders. Play around and make a few shapes, then drag them to overlap, you know, making sure they are solid shapes and not just outlines. Because selecting Boolean union to combine those two shapes into one shape. And with just this basic knowledge, you can pretty much get started. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.